Hey, George Washington, are you here to debate me tonight? No, Barack, I'm not here for a debate. I have been watching the last few years from the great beyond, and thought it was about time I dropped by for a chat. Oh, okay, you must want to tell me what a great job I am doing as president, especially in these troubled times. You must be joking. Do you really believe things are going well? That depends on how you look at it. I'm the first black president, that's something, right? Yes, I guess it is. But let's talk about your election for a minute. What was your platform again? Well, George, I am the culmination of a dream that started with Martin Luther King long ago. I gave speech after speech and told people that I would bring them hope and change. Do you mind me asking? Hope in what? Change? Change to what? Change from hopelessness to hope. Seriously? That was your whole campaign platform. Well, no. I talked about other things, but the media never really talked about any of that stuff. So I just kept saying, hope and change, and people really seemed to like that a lot. Is waving your arm like that supposed to be some kind of Jedi mind trick? It really creeps me out. Sorry. People seem to like it when I'm emphatic. Never mind. What was the stuff you said that the media wouldn't report? Well, I said in one interview that I had plans for a cap and trade system that would bankrupt the coal industry and cause everyone's utilities to skyrocket. I really thought people would want to talk about that, but it never came up in interviews with the media. Really? I missed that? I know. Everyone missed it. You can see it on YouTube though. I also said that the Constitution was outdated and to confining because it makes it hard to do social engineering. You know, we actually wrote it that way on purpose. It is supposed to be limiting. It was our desire that those people who worked hard would reap the rewards of their own hard work. And those who were lazy and who wanted to live off the system would go to places like Canada. We didn't want future generations to try and confiscate money from the wealthy to give to others and create class warfare. We wanted government to stay out of people's way, not try to provide their way. Oh. Well then, how did you expect us to pay for things like Planned Parenthood, farm subsidies, and research on the environmental impact of cow flatulence? If we don't take it from those greedy rich people, how can we pay for that stuff? Well, you could always try not spending money on stupid stuff like that and stick to just infrastructure and common defense. I am going to pretend I didn't hear what you just said. Anyway, Michael Moore says there is plenty of money to go around. But right now, in the current tax structure, over 50% of all Americans pay zero federal taxes. Zip. Not one penny. In fact, some of those even get refunds of money they're never paid in. Meanwhile the wealthiest 5% pay almost the entire tax burden. I know. Those greedy rich people? No no no. You're missing my point Barack. Aside from the fact that it is morally dubious to confiscate money from one class of people to give to another. It's also is a big part of the reason your economy is struggling now. No no no. You obviously haven't heard. That's all Bush's fault. Wait a minute. The economy crashed because banks were making loans to people who never should have gotten them in the first place. And weren't they getting pressure from people like Janet Reno and others in government who thought it looked good politically to get home ownership up? This started in the Clinton years but continued steadily all along through the Bush years. And by the way didn't you have a Democratic Congress for a big part of Bush's presidency? No, no. Bush's fault. Okay, we will have to disagree on that point. Well, what else did you run on? Well, I did say I would end the war and bring the troops home in the first year. Yes. And? Well, after I got into office, all my advisors said that not only was that not possible, but also that it would probably destabilize the region if we pulled out, so I had to renege on that one. Okay. What else? I also said 
that I would have the most open, honest and transparent presidency of all time. How is that going for you? Were you able to do that? Well, it turns out. Here we go again. After I got into office, there were people that felt like I owed them something for getting me elected. They weren't so keen on the open policy I wanted. So I have had to have a lot of closed door meetings and keep things on the down low. You're killing me here, man. How about that promise you made to go line by line through the budget and eliminate wasteful spending? I remember you said that in a half hour infomercial you bought in prime time during the campaign. That's a funny thing. Actually, the president doesn't even have the power to do that. It takes an act of Congress to do that. So that was totally bogus. I feel really bad about that one though. If it makes you feel any better? No, it doesn't. Wasn't a big part of your campaign centered around saying Bush was a wasteful spender and Washington needed fiscal responsibility? Did you at least hold the line on spending? Well actually, I have put my signature on more spending than any president in history. So much more in fact. That our yearly national debt has become an almost unimaginable number. It's over one trillion dollars a year now. Why would you do that? Bush's fault. No, actually, the country was in crisis, and Rahm Emanuel told me, you should never let a good crisis go to waste. Ultimately, I have been able to slip in all kinds of social engineering, pet projects, loans to eco-groups, that never should have been allowed. I even got a version of socialized medicine to go through that is going to cost trillions. As well as legislation passed without Congress even reading it. Only when people are afraid can you get away with that. I don't understand, why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? Before the election I told people the Constitution was outdated and, and was in need of an overhaul. And if you remember I told Joe the plumber I think it's better if we spread the wealth around. I really admire France and Canada and all those countries that do socialism well. But Barack, in those countries people have no opportunity to move up at all. Whatever life they are born into, is what they are stuck with. There is a ruling class and working class, always at odds with each other. They have learned to live with over 10% unemployment all the times and their economy is always in trouble. That is not something we should want to model. We need to get back to the basics of what made America great. You mean greed, and capitalism? No, Barack, just capitalism. We never wanted greed to go unchecked. And there are ways to prevent it. But capitalism, is what made America great. Think about it. When I was president America was a nothing country. We had the smallest economy in the world and was dead last in every category. In less than 150 years America became the largest economy, and greatest creators of wealth the world has ever known. No. Greedy capitalism bad. Socialism good. Just look at China. They have had over 3000 years to grow their economy. We did it in 150. Capitalism is the great rising tide that raises all boats, not the enemy. It simply needs checks and balances. Everyone can agree for instance that big oil and insurance providers have unfair monopolies that need to be broken up, but that doesn't mean capitalism is the enemy. Yes. But I need people to believe capitalism is the enemy, so I can get re-elected. Speaking of that, the economy is in the tank. You can't even get your own party to pass your jobs bill. Unemployment is still near 10%. We have become a joke to the rest of the world. The dollar is falling, groceries prices are through the roof, and people have totally lost confidence in your ability to bring about any kind of economic recovery. What are you going to campaign on this time? After all we have had four years of your policies so it can't be Bush's fault anymore. How about belief in something new? So, basically hope and change. Yup. And there you have it folks. The real problem we are having is not Republicans versus Democrats. It's the uneducated voter. Obama said everything you needed to know before the election to let you know he was a social progressive, who doesn't like the Constitution, hates capitalism, and admires socialist. But instead all we heard about was the other candidate's wardrobe. 
and who had a pregnant daughter. Enough is enough. True hope and change comes when you get off your rear end, educate yourselves, and stop being fooled by one candidate after another who keep recycling the same repackaged garbage year after year. Please do the country a favor and don't vote if you are going to get your news from Saturday Night Live or Comedy Central. It's too important.